Hey guys, welcome back to another video and today I'm going to give you an update on the self-balancing robot. So if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that I've been developing a self-balancing robot for quite some time now. Um, I'll leave a link to my Instagram below so you can take a look, but basically I did it on the Arduino and it didn't go so well. It went okay, it kind of worked, it balanced, but I decided to port it over to a different micro microcontroller mainly for a challenge to sort of break away from Arduino but yeah uh, I'm gonna give you an update on that I'm gonna try and document the stages along the way and give you a little update videos and explain why I did certain things and sort of advice for anyone else trying to do a similar project but I'm gonna take you over to the workbench now and I'll show you where I'm at and what I plan to do in the future so yeah let's go over there Okay guys, so this is the balancing robot. Obviously, it's in pieces, and there are a couple of reasons for that, which I'll get into, but basically, I've started from scratch, kind of, so if you didn't know what the robot looked like before, I'll leave a picture here, and also a link to my Instagram. Go follow me on there if you want to keep updated. But that's what it looked like before, and that kind of worked. It was a good design, um, it balanced, it did balance for quite a long time and then I was having issues with accelerometer drift and also just the fact that the motors I was using before were not high enough RPM so for example when the robot uh, tilted a certain angle it would just keep going at an angle until eventually it fell over and to counter that what you need is faster motors so that as soon as you approach that angle you can just correct straight away. Even if it means overshooting, you can also correct back. So what it was actually doing was, you know, it would, it would sort of balance like this. It would do this really well. And then it would tilt forward a lot, as I said. It would just keep going and then stumble over. But what it needs is that sort of, that speed, that adjustment speed, so it can constantly counter itself through the PID control. So hopefully the changes I'm going to make will combat that. One of those is speed control. I don't have speed control on these motors, so I'm going to try it without speed control, see my results, and then if I need it, I might go for new motors again with speed control. Speed control is kind of only useful if you want to move the robot around, which I do want to do eventually, but I kind of like doing things one step at a time. You know, you don't want to get too far ahead of yourself. So... I'm going to implement speed. Uh, I'm going to implement uh, just getting it balancing first, and then probably do speed control later. But speed control is useful, as I said, if you want to, you know, drive the robot around because you can you can work out what speed is suitable to move forward at at that angle, and use that as your sort of forward momentum. And also, if you want to sort of spin the robot like this, you need to know what speed to turn the wheels at. To keep it upright it kind of helps the PID in that sense um, so what I was using before was the Arduino Uno board this is a it's a great little board for simple little projects but um, there's not many pins on there and I ran into a couple of issues so what I decided to do was switch for a mega board so this is an Arduino mega board and as I said, it's just got more output pins. I think it's a little bit faster as well. And yeah, it's, it's, it was better for this, and you know, and it fitted nicely on top here of the chassis that I made. So I went with that, and I did learn a lot doing it on the Arduino. But what I've decided to do is port the whole thing over to an ESP32 board. So if I actually show you it's still connected up because I've been doing some tests but this is the ESP32 board it's really it's a really nice board um, it can do so much just from this one little chip that's the chip you need there and all the surrounding circuitry so you can essentially make your own PCB with just this section and it'll run obviously depending on what features you want some features you require other components for which is what the development board does but for basic um, operation, you just need this little section of the circuit here, which is something else I want to do. You know, I want to design my own PCB and get that mounted 
and have everything running on my own PCB, even potentially the H-Bridge motor controller. That's something I want to get into as well as designing my own uh, power circuitry and things like that. So, on the original, original version of um, my balancing robot, I was using these wheels. And you can probably recognize them they're from a lot of basic kits. But honestly, they were terrible. The issue I was having with these was uh, wheel spin, actually. So, what I had to do was I was using. Uh, electrical tape like this so I would put the electrical tape backwards so that the sticky side was facing out and I'd wrap it around the wheels and what that did was just give you a bit more grip but obviously it was it was a pain because they just fall off and things it was it was annoying but I decided to switch to these um, RC car wheels and these ones mean business they're pretty funny uh, they're really shiny I just love having them on the on the robot. It looks so cool. So hopefully, when I you know can get my three D printer involved in this project as well, it'll look really good at the end, and that's something that I really want to get done. Um, but obviously, you want to focus on the core elements first, which is to get it balancing and to get your accelerometer and gyroscope working as expected. So uh, this is the one I was using. And I'm probably going to continue using this. It's the MPU 6050. I did have problems with it with accelerometer drift. But I'm going to try and combat them. There's a few ways out there. You can do like Kalman filter, filters and other things. Or even maybe use two of them and have them sort of against each other. Uh, or combine them to create one reading. But I tried out so many things. You know, I, I tried putting it closer to the... Um, the wheel axles because then you've got less movement if you think about it you know at the top you've got more of a a movement which is which will disrupt your readings the more vibration you put through these the worse they get which is which is why it's a kind of tricky problem you know because this thing is constantly when you're trying to tune the PID it's constantly shaking like this and you need that kind of balance of keeping it smooth so you get smooth readings but also being able to handle when it isn't smooth so it's a really tricky engineering problem um, so what I've been doing uh, recently is just getting things running on the ESP32 so the first thing I did was try and obtain motor control and I managed to do that the motors will now spin, they'll just go forwards and then go backwards, which is good enough for me at the minute, you know, I know how to control them now. So the next step for me will be getting the accelerometer and gyroscope communicating with this board using I squared C, and that can be a little bit tricky, it's not as easy as on the Arduino. On the Arduino it's literally just plug and play, you know, it's... It's one of the reasons I'm not too fussed on Arduino because it kind of skips past a lot of the deeper understanding required if you truly want to engineer between these devices, you know. Um, you learn a lot more doing it the hard way than essentially just doing it the easy way on the Arduino. Um, that's part of the reason why I decided to port it over to this board because... It's more challenging for me. I'm going to learn a lot more. I make more mistakes too, but that's how you learn, right? So, yeah, I'm going to learn how to use this chip. I'm also going to learn how to create a PCB for this chip. I've been learning Autodesk Eagle lately, which I've also got as part of a package with Fusion 360 and things like that. So, yeah, the next steps for me are designing a sort of temporary chassis other than this. Because I want to use a 3D printer and use a lighter material, which will be PLA. So what I did was, um, I've got a lot of Meccano, old Meccano sets. And I've just, I basically bought like a job lot from eBay of Meccano pieces. And I decided to throw something together, which would essentially, it looked something like this, right? So this would go on top. And then I had... I had the microcontroller up there and I had the battery 
either I think it was on the bottom actually I had the battery but you know that's what it looked like it looked okay to be fair but I think the metal is quite heavy and the more weight you've got the harder the problem becomes so um, yeah as I said I want to get a 3d printer going here's another kind of chassis that I used that was the original one as you can see it's still kind of the same shape but again that, that weighs quite a lot you know you want it to be light and have be as easy easy to control as, as possible really um, so yeah I'm just gonna 3d print and 3d print a structure a basic structure that I can use just to get started hopefully get the accelerometer and gyroscope working I'm gonna bring it all together and hopefully in the next update video I'll I'll have made use of this on this board and I might explain how I did it as well if, if people are interested in that but um, as far as the project goes I'm just gonna kind of do update videos so yeah I mean that's where I'm at right now um, hopefully you've got a bit of understanding as where I'm heading with the direction of the project and if you're interested stay tuned and yeah so back over there okay guys thanks for watching uh, I know a lot of people are interested in this project it's a really exciting one it's definitely a very challenging one and that's part of the reason why I'm still doing it and I want it to be a successful project especially with the 3d printer and things like that now I can do so much more with the 3d printer and the ESP32 so I hope you stay tuned for the whole sort of journey of the project and I'll keep coming with these update videos if you want to stay tuned uh, hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up and yep thanks for the support I'll see you on the next video take it easy